Mike, hello. Joe, what's going on? Not much, buddy. Good to see you. Yeah. Well, we're here. We're in Algonquin Park. Why don't you tell the fine folks what we're going to be doing? Uh, so we're doing six nights, seven days. It's about 100 miles, um, about half of its lakes. So the first quarter is lakes. Then we're doing the Nipissing River for about two or three nights. And then lakes to finish it off. Yeah. And so on the, on the river, we'll be into the brook trout, hopefully. In the lakes, there's lake trout. There's bass in some of the lakes. So we got our fishing stuff. We have had a little bit of a break in the weather. You can see a dark sky, but it's not raining on us right now. When we were driving in, there's some blue over there. When we were driving in, we were getting poured on. So we both drove about six-ish hours to get yep. here today. Yep. So it's time to start. We got two o'clock. We have 11 or 13? 13 kilometers, four kilometers of portaging. Upstream. And five hours of daylight. <laughs> so we gotta go. <laughs> Clouds are nuts today. Yeah, we're almost on 3K already. Really? Yeah. Oh, we're moving. We are moving, boys and girls. Some beautiful fall colors. Might be kind of hard to see from here, but we'll get in a different angle. Not peak just yet, but lots of color. This is gonna be a good trip. We got long days, some 30 kilometer days. No joke portages. This is an old school real trip. Mike and Joe's super excellent, super duper excellent adventure. So we're just coming up on the first portage now. It's a healthy one at about 950 meters. I haven't done a real single, we're single carrying on this trip, but single carrying means we're carrying our canoes, our one backpack we have each, our poles, and everything all at once. One carry, single carry. Otherwise, you're walking there, back, and there again. So you're walking three times as opposed to one if you go back for your gear and whatnot. So I haven't single carried for real. In probably a year last trip to Algonquin with Doug maybe last fall uh, that trip that I did with Kyle um, in Woodland Caribou in, in July we double carried and I think I single carried once or twice on that trip but only for like a hundred meters at a time we're starting this off with a 950 so we'll see how she goes I'm ready to portage though I'm tired of paddling for now that's a good thing about canoe tripping We've just paddled for an hour straight, pretty decent, across a big lake. And my arms are getting a little sore. I haven't paddled in a while. So that's good. Now I get to take a break and walk with a canoe and a backpack through the woods for a kilometer. My backpack weighs around 30 pounds. Canoe weighs around 26 pounds. Mike's bag, he thinks he said he weighs around 36, 36 pounds for his bag and the canoe weighs the same. So we're sitting pretty sitting pretty on the weight issue and I don't foresee it being a problem. I don't see the sign yet. No, me either. That's not a good sign. Ah. Ah. Ah, we're looking for the portage that can't be found. But I did find a beaver dam, beaver lodge. Ba bam the dam the dam son see what i did mike see what i did First day will be an easy day. <laughs> this is a quick jaunt. I 
think this is it. This is it. How's that, how's that muck treating you? <laughs> well, it might as well start out. So Joe, we finished the first portage, it was about 900 meters, how did it go? It was rough for me. I um, I don't know what it was, if I had my, my weight distribution off. I did stop and, and move around my, my backpack and stuff and the yoke helped a bit, but all of my like hips and my butt and my my thighs and my calves are just on fire. I never feel like that on a portage, but that portage kicked my butt. Good thing to start, well, we gotta do <laughs> 150 kilometers. Right, well at least there's Bill Tom. Yeah. So. And uh, yeah, so we had to stop for a little snacky poo, but we got to keep going because um, yeah, time is not on our side tonight. Nice. The sun hit Mike's boat. This is a splash of red against those clouds. Oh, good call. We're in a shallow little creek now. What is this called? Do you remember? Maple Creek. Maple Creek. Paddling upstream, but there is. There's a little bit of a, a ripple, but there's not much current. There's a lot of painted rocks, though, from canoes gone by. This is pretty. Yeah, I, love, I love these fucking... Hell yeah. A little first beaver dam crossing. Mike's just g it right through. These colors are nice in here, man. We're still moving, and by our progress, it seems that the uh, the destination at Maple Lake is not going to be an issue. Oh, wow! Did you see him? I don't know what that was. I believe some kind of falcon. Anyways, he was super close. Um... Yeah, well, we're going to be able to get to our destination no problem before dark. It's 10 after 5 now. Probably be there in about an hour, hour and a half. Um, we do have a 600 and an 850 meter portage. And my portaging has not been going well. I, re I rearranged my backpack again, so... Alright, another update. We're still here on Maple Creek. Come to a very substantial beaver dam. We came across 5 or 6. We can able to shimmy across a couple... Had to lift over a couple. This one's a get out type of thing for sure. Get out of the canoe type of dam. Oh, 
weather looks... <laughs> it's raining, Mike. Well, we have been going, going, going. It's now almost 7. It's got to be 7. 6.57. We're on Maple Lake, out of Maple Creek now. Finally on the Maple Lake that we're going to camp on. Um, it's a little bit. Looking at this island right in front of me, Mike's up there. There's a campsite on it. I think we're going to grab it because it's going to be dark very soon. Losing light, it just poured on us. Stop raining again, which is great. I don't think we're gonna have much for our fire tonight. We'll cook on the bush, buddy. Go to the twig stove and maybe set up the tarp, sit around for a bit. But uh, I don't know, I don't know about a fire, especially if we're on this island because there's not gonna be any firewood at all. But that's all right, maybe we can just burn a little bit in the twig stove and sit around for a bit. I did not bring a chair on this trip. And I'm already starting to regret it. If we're going to be moving all day long, I just should have just brought the chair so I could roll up to camp and sit down. But instead I brought a lightweight hammock thinking I can use it for a chair and a, a rest. And I'm sure on a couple days that'll be fine. But on those 30 kilometer days, might be a different story. And today when it's all wet, it's like I do have a sit pad, but I don't really want to sit on the ground. But no big deal. I've done worse. I've done far worse. Yeah. Um, there is some wood here already. Oh, that's good. Like quite a bit. I don't know how good it is. There's definitely at least two good flat spots. Okay, I'm sold. Well, we've arrived. This is our island site. It's actually really nice. A little bit of a bench for me here. Um, but there's not going to be any firewood. There's this little bit here of cedar, but it is super wet. we got to get out and comb the shore a little bit and try and find some... A little bit of driftwood. So Mike, Mike's searching for his saw. I'm going to do the same. But before we head out, we're going to set up the tarp just in case it starts to rain again, which is a good possibility. So everything else we can kind of do in the dark, right? We can cook, we can set up our tents, all that fun stuff it can all be done in the dark. But the tarp, especially if it's raining, will be much easier to do now. So I've got a still nylon, nine by nine. Here you want to unravel this. A little reflective cord and some paracord already tied off onto here. We'll just rig something up real quick. Throw the stuff sack in my pocket so it's not lost. This is the Kyle made tarp. All right. Um, this way. Right that way. Can we get it over the fire too? Yeah, here, 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 and there. Yeah, okay. And then we can kind of. Okay. That might. I don't know how far that'll go. Give me one side, is it? There's a nail on that. <clears throat> Are you want to use this as a ridge line? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and then use that after. Use everything else after just to peg it out. I can do it here, yeah. I got about an inch. What's that? No, I'm... No? We'll, we'll, I, got, I got some short stuff. I'll just pick tight it. It's okay. Hold on. We can even um, just do this to this and this tree to this tree. Or sorry, that tree to that tree maybe. Or we could do that one to this one. Will it go? I think so. There's a nail on the, on the far side for me. On the which side? Uh, on the other side, opposite side of the tree. You got it there, or just yeah. got, do you have room? Oh, I got lots. Okay. Can you do a top, top line hitch in that one? Yeah. Okay, cool. We're getting somewhere. <laughs> Is 
What's that? Should I get my? Uh, let's put it on the on the on the uh, the toggles first and get it up there, right? And then we'll worry about. We can probably go corner to corner even, eh? So I was thinking. Yeah. You wanna? Uh, let's turn it so that that rope is going that way. Yeah. Come this way, so yep. otherwise you're gonna get wet on. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Yeah. Look at that. All right. Let me just tie it up and we're good. It's one paracord. All right. So, the camera is making it a little bit brighter than it actually is out here, but we are losing light pretty good. We got that uh, tarp up. Only took five minutes. Now we're off to get wood. It's time to take a load off and relax. I got my chili done. Mike's working on his right now. We're both sharing the uh, Bush Buddy Twig stove for this trip, as opposed to carrying two stoves. Mm. Yes, I am regretting not bringing a chair. How silly of me. So we have, uh, like Mike was saying earlier, we have about 100 miles to cover in the course of six-ish days. We're staying for six nights, including tonight. We're going to see a lot of the park, a lot of the park that you have not seen at all yet, right? I haven't seen any of this park. I've seen yeah. a, a, probably half of it with Kyle, what we're doing. Yeah. So a lot of it's new. It'll be exciting. Today we got, we lucked out, man. We lucked out big time. Like, it came down a couple times on us, but other than that, like, we got pretty dry. I'm pretty dry. Yeah, it was supposed to literally rain all day, right? Yep. All day, all night, so we got maybe 10, 20 minutes combined. Yep, not bad. Yeah. So, I think tomorrow was not too bad of a day. Today we did 13 in, like, what, four hours? 13 kilometers in five. Five hours? Yeah, tomorrow we got 20. 20 kilometers, and we're not getting starting at 2 p.m. Yeah, yeah. So tomorrow we'll have a nice day and uh, hopefully some fish. Hopefully I can hang my hammock and take a load off there too. That'll be a day for the hammock. My backpack is a little heavy. The more we eat, the less heavy it will be. Unfortunately, the way our trip is mapped out, all the hard portaging is in the first few days yeah. where our packs are the heaviest. But we wanted to come to a part of the park that we hadn't seen before. This is equally six hours-ish from both of our houses. Right on the top of Algonquin Park, starting at Kiosk Lake. Normally, everything we've done together has been off 60? Yep. Off Highway 60, yep. and that's in the bottom. Smoke Lake, Canoe Lake. Yep. Most of the stuff I've done in the park is accessed on the west side of the park, so this is all new. All new. Haven't seen anyone yet. There was a couple paddling in as we were putting setting out, but that was, what, two minutes into the paddle? Yeah. We saw them as we were starting off. Yeah. And today is what? Monday. Monday. And we're here till next Sunday. Sunday. So maybe next weekend. Got some time out here. Well, it's just past nine. We both had enough for today. I've been going, I got up at three o'clock this morning and uh, was dealing with Tripper and drove for six hours and same with Mike. So anyways, we're both, we're both pretty bleh, both pretty tired, ready for bed. I'm gonna try to sleep in tomorrow as much as possible. Tomorrow is probably the shortest day other than today and the very last day. So try to sleep in tomorrow morning and uh, yeah, get a good night's sleep tonight. Got some good portaging to do tomorrow. Um, and hopefully my body can take it. I guess we shall see. I'm going to build up my my man muscles again. I'm just slacking, slacking lately, Joe. All right, you guys have a good night. And I'll see you in the morning. Good night.
good morning folks it's almost 8 in the morning here I got about a 10 hour sleep last night so that's not too shabby compared to the night before that I got I broken up 5 hours feeling nice and rested and rejuvenated it's a little chilly this morning and very wet so just cutting some of the I cut some cedar very short and then I'm batoning it down into manageable pieces so we can get this um, bush buddy stove going I can hear Mike rustling around in his tent there ready to get up we both slept in but it was needed today it's a pretty gray day let's see what happens but either way it's a 20 kilometer travel day with some decent portaging so gotta get a good healthy breakfast start off the day right it's a canoe trip folks it's a real canoe trip <laughs> you're welcome the sun is making an appearance. Oh my goodness. Okay, so we put in here at Kiosk, which is Access 29. We came west and then down through Maple Creek last night. And we stayed on this uh, island site right here. So that took about five hours. That took five hours to go 13 kilometers. So this morning we're heading west through Maple Rat Trap into Three Mile Lake and then we're camping on Bigger tonight and that is 20 kilometers so it's a little bit longer than we did yesterday but we can start at 9 a.m. not 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. and then on Wednesday we're heading south through Lochran Creek which has black portages mm -hmm. um, so that's seeing us down to the Nipissing River that's our probably our worst day uh, will be our longest day and then we're staying uh, at Browse Creek here somewhere uh, for the night, we're staying on the river that night, yep. And then on Thursday, we're heading east and we're staying here at the Nadine Lake Portage. Um, so it's all river travel for the whole day. Nice. And then Friday, we're back on the Nipissing again. Very little portaging this time, and we're taking it all the way to Cedar Lake, which is just here off of the map. So that will be our Friday night campsite. And yeah, then there's cedar there, the name at least. Yeah, it's just poking yeah, up there. Yeah, right. And then where do we hook back in? And then we come kind of northwest through here, through Little Cochon and Big Cochon. Le Petit Cochon. Yeah, and we're camping on Mink Lake on Saturday night. So again, that day is a lot of paddling, but not a lot of portaging. Um, so we're staying on, I think, Mink Lake up here. And then our access is back here again. So in the morning on Sunday, we can get out quickly with just a couple of short portages. Cool. So for the people at home, show them quickly the the route with your finger. Start here, down through, this is all lake travel. And then starting here, we have two or three days of creek travel. And this is the Nipissing River. And then we're like in the middle of the park. Right, right in the dead middle of the park. Then the, the river heads due east, it juts north here, and then continues east all the way across. Yeah, that's a hefty river travel. Yeah. And then up, and yeah. then back. And then up. Straight through here. And yeah, back. we're doing a good chunk of this park, Mike. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, we should uh, probably pack, pack up. up. Yeah, we've been just like <laughs> lagging around. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least one morning we'll be able to do it. Oh, my nose is just dripping off my face. You're welcome. All right, camp is packed up. Took us quite a bit longer than we wanted. Got to get into the groove of things still. But this is a really nice campsite. This first island site on Maple Lake, right? Yeah, North End. North End. It's a great site. Roomy. No wood, but you can scrounge. Import. Import. The best kind. Alright, time to get these boats in the water or what? Yeah, let's go. Ready to go? I am ready. It's a nice day, man. Yeah, perfect. Hell yeah.
Mike in the water. Bam, bam, bam. All right, we're at our first portage of the day. From Maple Lake into Rat Trap Lake. It's only a 390. But just after a hop, skip, and a jump in, into Rat Trap, there's a 15 something. So over a kilometer. So I only need to take a break on that one, I'm sure. Almost done this 390. My backpack is riding much better today. I must have packed it in there better. So that's great news for this big portage that's about to come up over a kilometer and a half long. I gotta be coming out to the to the water here soon. Starting to breathe a little heavy. The ground is very wet. And we have tons of exposed roots, like here. They get really slick when they're wet. So you gotta watch where you're stepping and how you're stepping. Watch how you step to me, bro. So according to the map, looks like we're about two and a half hours from our lake. That's not bad. We got a 1220, a little guy, 320, a 1040, and a 520. <laughs> Very short paddles in between. Say that again. What do we have? So we're right here. Yeah. We're on Three Mile Lake. We just came from uh, North Sylvia Lake. Sylvia. Come paddle all the way down. There's a bunch of campsites here. We have a 1220, and then a 320, a 1040, a 520, and then we're staying on Bigger Lake tonight. Oh, man. We, we've done a lot of portaging today already. Yes, yes. We've done 3,500 meters so far. 3,500 meters of portaging. And we have like 3,000 left. <laughs> yeah. That math isn't the same math as last night, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> the math is degrading. <laughs> Short-ish. Today we have three that are over 1,000 meters, which is pretty aggressive. Who planned this? I, two buffoons <laughs> having a few beers. <laughs> Always seems like a good idea when you're like warm and at home. In the comfort of your Dry. awesome basement. Yeah. <laughs> On this lake, eh? Very much so, yeah. Yeah, that's true, Mike. Mike just pointed out there's a whole lot of deciduous uh, trees on this lake. Algonquin Park's nice. It's got a good mix, man. Lots of lots of pine, lots of maple. We saw some tamarack today too. During the daytime portaging paddling, I got uh, my map in this pocket, my cargo pocket. I got my water filter in this one, and then when I'm in the boat. Most of those, both those things are next to me in my seat, but I'll portage this way, and uh, that way everything's nice and handy. And you can see Mike over there across the lake. He left his hat, <laughs> had to go paddle back across to get it, but it was only a five minute paddle. Here we are on our last portage of the day. We're going from Sinclair to Bigger Lake, and that's a 520. We've been going hard all day. This is probably the second most portaging I've done in a, on a canoe trip in a day ever. Uh, it'll be about, about seven kilometers by the time we're done, 6.5 maybe. So yeah, I'm starting to wear out. But actually my our la the last portage was uh, 1,050 meter and I didn't stop on it. And I was stopping on 500 meters um, the, yesterday. So maybe I'm getting my man muscles. <laughs> maybe I'm just getting back into the groove of things. But oh, Mike's got his hat, he's wearing it. Nice. But yeah, so we'll, we'll catch up with you. We're going to try and look for a good spot on Bigger Lake. Um, hope, hoping for a little bit of a sunset tonight. It's very cloudy, so who knows. But tonight we'll have a fire. We'll sit, sit around, lounge, and, uh, and enjoy some camp time, which is nice. I want to do that. Last night we just kind of get here and get settled and start the trip. It was raining and all that. So, yes, it'll be a good night tonight.
Wow, what a pretty lake this is, man. Look at the hills and the color. This is our camp lake for tonight. Very excited to be here. 336. Made a good time. Made a really good time. The uh, the water's about a foot deep here. Mike's way back there and it's two, three inches deep. He's got to walk it out. Yeah. <laughs> Are we going to do any paddling on this canoe trip? <laughs> I think the wind's picking up. Why do you say that? <laughs> so how, how do you feel about today, Mike? It was good. It was tough. We struggled there in the beginning, but it's worth it at the end, right? Yeah. We haven't seen a single person. Probably not a lot of people come into this lake. That's why we came here, really, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm happy with today, too. It was a lot of work, but... Worked out some kinks, worked out my friggin' kinks in my back as well. <laughs> it was a tough day to get into the groove of it, but tomorrow is not going to be really any better. <laughs> or the next day, or the next day. Who planned this trip? Well, we got here, and I, uh, we were just both tired, just sitting around for a minute, didn't really look around too much. Finally got up and walked around, I'm like, oh man, I've camped here before. <laughs> Kyle and I camped at this exact spot. I, I remember because of this rock here, I had my New Balance Trail Runner shoes up here on a, for a photo. I had my tent here, and I did a little scene here about how much food I had left. I believe it was on day four of a nine, eight or nine day trip, eight night trip, uh, all through the top part of here uh, in Algonquin. Um, I knew we camped on bigger, but I didn't remember what site at all. And as soon as I saw this, it brought back all that, all those memories. That was like, I don't know, man. Six, 2015, 14. Anyway, it was a long time ago. But um, this is a nice sight, and I'm glad to be back here. I'm gonna camp in the exact same spot that I camped last time. We gotta get some firewood going. I got my hammock up, as you saw, just relaxing in that for a little while. Feeling pretty good, keeping up on the water, keeping up on the food. Oh, I hung my tarp up too to lose some of the water weight. Our tents and tarp, my tarp had a, a bunch of water weight on it from um, from last night from the rain. My tarp had about a, like four cups of water pooled at the top of it this this morning. Like to look, I like before I, after I set my tent up and before I peg it into place or wherever I want to, I know that the, the general area I want to camp normally, but I want to find like the direct, 
the, the, the proper direction of where this is the flattest. And if it's not going to be flat ground, I want my head to be elevated more than anything, more than being off to the side or my head being either side of my head being low. I prefer my head to be elevated if it has to be, if it has to be anything. But looking right here, and, and this tent, I, I really do, I can't sleep in it either way because if I sleep in it with my head down here, there's so much condensation that builds up because this is the foot part, right? It's like a bivy. This is the top part. I think right here is a really decent spot, really flat, and I'll put my head this way. Nope. Right there. Sometimes I'll get in and make sure it's not too slanty. I might, I might as well do that right now, actually. It's not, uh, I'm not rushed for time. You know, it's not the biggest deal in the world if it's not completely flat, and it will never be completely flat, but if I have time and space and the energy to do so, why not try to make it as mo the most comfortable sleep I can, I can get. Yep, this is good to go. Oh my goodness, Mike, you gotta ch check this out. There's a spider going between two trees like 30 feet up in the air. Where? It's a pretty decent size too. Uh, maybe not 30 feet, but pretty high up. Where'd he go? There he is, yeah. Oh, I got him on there, I found him. Maybe 20 feet up. Move, spider, spider. Dog spider? <laughs> the old dog spider. He's right there. I realized I got really excited about that. <laughs> We've been made. What's that? We've been made. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Symphony. Or they like the Uber Eats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'll try to remember to link uh, that video where Kyle and I were here at this campsite up there, but uh, you know how good I am at that. We're going to go get some firewood. They're going to town in there. Get some firewood. For tools, uh, this trip we have, I have a silky. Mike has his silky and his um, Grantsford's outdoor axe. We only really need one axe in be between the two of us. That's how we've been rolling. That's how uh, I've been doing it with two people. But two two small saws is good or one big buck saw, but these silkies work, too, work really well. Ugh. My brain is mush from, from moving all day. Okay, off into the woods here. Find some suitable dead stand. Uh. Check for the moose poop. Oh, there's a little chipmunk. Little chipmunk guy. Oh, he's gone. There he is. Hello. Oh, it's a red squirrel. Hello. That's probably the guy yelling at us. Maybe he's used to people wanting food or something. No dog squirrel. <laughs> See, yeah, it works. Everything. Oh, he's up there. Hold. Oh. It's a big old birch tree too. It is. Batula. Peripheral. <laughs> oh man, that must have hurt, eh? That must have hurt coming out. <laughs> Like those are the size of chocolate covered almonds, right? And then that's just like 25 chocolate covered almonds. It's a baseball. <laughs> There's a, pick it up and throw it too. It's okay. Baseball. There's a mushroom growing out of it. <laughs> oh, wow. That's the good kind, Circle I think. Of life. So you can see, like, we're back into the bush now, but you can see just how raided this place is of uh, firewood. This is an old spruce that's fallen just every single limb possible oh no there's one <laughs> every other limb has been broken off for firewood oh man this is some good color in here huh. 
So yeah, we will have to uh, put some effort into finding wood. See, there's firewood. All we had to do was hike two football fields into the woods. <laughs> oh, okay, that's some good stuff. Yeah, here, and then, oops, there. Yeah, man, there's quite a few. It is. This is a really pretty forest. Uh-oh, it's not as good as it looked. <laughs> it's tools. Yeah. yeah. This one's super dry, man. Perfect. There's a couple of here. Okay. Almost had a case of the broken silky there. <laughs> oh man, that was a crazy flex. Classic maneuver. All right. Oh, your silky still has the tip. How nice. Oh, she's got a little. She's got a little bend to her. <laughs> It is going to be a beautiful night. The sky is cleared right up. Might get a little bit chilly. But I'm totally cool with that. Everything's all dried off now. No more water weight on the tarps or the tents. Which is always nice.
So I'm using the old Scout logo, uh, bigger pot. One thing that does happen, uh, soot covers the logo, but you can just scrub that off with a um, steel wool, which I've done. But look at how good the lid fits. Like you Let me pick it up. So in here I have shredded chicken, pre-cooked shredded chicken. Like you can see. I've also got yellow beans and rice. So this is doing something here. I might have to throw it back on uh, the fire after just to cook up the chicken. It's you know what the chicken is very hard to rehydrate. That's why I shred it with a fork as opposed to leaving it cubed. Yeah, I'll have to throw that back on, but that's going to be dinner. And then I have Barbarian's uh, seasoning. Barbarian Steakhouse in Toronto. I have their seasoning to go on there. So, looking forward to that tonight. What do you got going on, Mike? Shepherd's pie. Woo, buddy. Potatoes go on later. Nice. <clears throat> I'm going to put all of it in, just in case it's too much, I'll put that much and then I can all, all, always uh, season it more after. Oh yeah, smelling good now. <coughs> She's springy. sleeping bag and my sleeping pad in here just for some warmth it's cold underneath but it works fine it's not convenient I can't pull it up to next to a, a fire later on you know, when we're sitting there having a fire but it works for this I probably won't do that again for this type of trip maybe on a double carry I'll bring a chair and a, and a small hammock but all right this is a lot of food this is a whole lot of food everything's rehydrated I believe I hope the chicken is Ninety percent. It's like a yeah, it's pretty good. And that spice works in there. I didn't put too much in it, but there's enough. Hmm. It's good to break it up because I have like three chilies. I had one chili last night. I'll have this tonight. Tomorrow will be like, oh, we said tomorrow's a big slog, so we're gonna do our uh, mountain housey type uh, meals. I have a. Alpine air pepper beef and rice or something So it's a lot of food and we'll need it tomorrow night And then that takes out a big chunk that that meal in my bag is probably worth two meals of my my dehydrated stuff It's all about cutting that weight down <laughs> I wanted to get out to fish it looks like a great night for it. I'm not sure if I'll have time the sun's going down seven o'clock now I just start eating so probably not but that's all right we'll have a good fire hang out by the fire is that the stranger things uh logo yeah it might be <laughs> something's happening over there oh man it's on fire dude yeah All we need is a loon. It's too bad I don't have my wire lens now. See all the ripples in the water? Yeah. Man, that is epic. Look at how menacing that looks. Yeah. Something wicked this way comes. Mm hmm. I think that's all the color we're going to get over there, but that's fine. That is pretty awesome. Right in that valley, eh? Yeah. Valley of fire. 
I guess it kind of brings everything into focus. Too, right? Yeah, that's the the big thing. Yes. Yeah. That's what it is. Instead of just the one very sharp. One hundred percent. What s soft lens is, is probably pretty. Four. 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 Which isn't great. But the fire compared to. That you know, yeah, it makes a yeah. different, totally different animal. Yeah. Right, you can see the definition in this and everything. Yeah, it looks sick. Yeah, it does look sick. It's a good looking fire. Yeah, you know, it's like a textbook fire. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. More. Even the sparks, eh? like the sparks coming off it. Oh, this is the sound. Good morning guys, had a great night's sleep last night, I got nine hours or so, I only got up once in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom and that is um, not normal for me, so I was very happy about that, but I do think I didn't drink enough water once I got to camp, me and Mike both kept up on the water like really good last night, or yesterday, sorry, but then when, when we got to camp we kind of didn't, so I can feel it this morning, I feel a little dehydrated. It's a good thing we're starting the day off with a two kilometer black portage <laughs> and then like four hours of slogging up a tiny creek. I'll show you, but on the map it says, um, there's Birchcliff Creek where Kyle and I did, which was like a six hour slog, or this Logrins Creek, and both say travel is difficult, but it's easier going Logrins, Lofrins, Laurens, I'm not sure how you say it. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna go that way and I haven't been that way, so that's good. I got, um, because I know today's a high energy day as, as well as yesterday, I got my snacks for probably half the day. I got some jerky, Cliff Bar, granola bar, two fruit bars, and a handful of M&M peanuts, peanut M&Ms. Uh, and I'll keep that right at the top of my bag so I don't have to continuously dig to the bottom to get my food because right now my food bag is probably right here because you want the heavier stuff lower and back against your back. We're gonna get out of here, 7.48. Mike's using the old dumper. And then we'll get out of here. I had a good one this morning. A real good one. Makes me feel alive. Here, I'll show you what I mean if, we, if the glare is not too bad. Um, right now we're in bigger. We're on this campsite here and we have to go just paddle boop a 10 minute paddle down there and then we have a 2010 meter black portage and the black portages mean they're unmaintained so they're a little bit more difficult they ended a Lorenz Creek, Laufrens Creek, whatever upstream, streams flowing that way so we're going downstream, sorry whatever, against the current regardless, against the current to there then there's a 635 black and then, to end off the day, we go through all Bart Owl, Lauren Harris, all that stuff. To end off the day, because we're camped right here, we have to do a 1910. So we're starting with a 2000, ending with a 2000. Then we're camped on the Nipissing. Today we're getting into the Nipissing River. It took us two days to get, it will have taken two and a half days to get there. And then we're on that Nip River for like two days after. But the, um, here's where it says, Although the although the campsites nope sorry low water can make travel difficult along Loferns Creek. That said, it's always easier easier than Birchcliff Creek, and Birchcliff is here. And this is what Kyle and I did on our trip. That's mirroring this one right now, uh, because Jake and the old Cedar Store told us that this is easier than this, and this was a slog. So I'm hoping, and this had sandy bottom, so it was okay. I'm hoping that this is not a muck bottom, that this is a sand bottom, not a muck bottom, because if this is muck, there's gonna be a lot of slogging and we might be taking a lot longer to do that than, it, than we think. But again, it's all part of the fun, it's the adventure, we don't know what's, what awaits, and uh, yeah, that's part of the reason we do this thing, right? Man in red. <laughs> oh. 
Well, we're just on our way to our first death march of the day. It is a really pretty lake, these contours and these colors. It's a very nice lake. You can actually get into this lake from a different access, from North P Lake access, with only a couple hop skips and a jump of uh, portaging. So we were talking about bringing the kiddos into some place like this, and it would be really nice, a really nice lake for them to see. I've been told that there's good fishing. I should be trolling. Why am I not trolling? I'm going to troll. Well, no luck on the fish in front. Now we're up into the marsh, so I pulled my uh, lure over the water. We're going to paddle through this nice looking marshy part for not very long. Look at the water, eh? The wind is kicking up. I'm a little chilled. I'm sure that portage will portal me right up. You that? Yep. Oh, there's no staying dry today. Pretty tight in here. We're not even to the creek yet. This is just getting out of the lake. <sighs> A little tight in here. I'm having to like javelin my my uh, canoe paddle through just to make it. Oh, I see the portage sign. Now is the time of our discontent. Although I'm kind of happy to do it because I'm pretty cold. I'm very cold, actually. Yeah, to Logrins Creek. This is the one. what it'll be that's it, it. it no the whole rest of it yeah we didn't have to get out right I imagine it's not gonna be better no it's gonna be worse it's definitely gonna be worse <laughs> oh good times there might be a couple sections there where it's like paddles apart yeah pep yeah like um like a ninja who has paddle man yeah paddle man who has a edward paddle hand like one of those long swords and then all of a sudden out of nowhere they just Take it apart and got two oh, katanas. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like that. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. All right, well, we're here. The creek doesn't look so bad, uh, from what we can see at least. Oh, there's frogs. Oh, froggies everywhere. Something just ran through there. Oh, they're frogs. <laughs> yeah, it looks, looks decent. If it stays like this, I won't be upset. So you can see the current 
by the uh, the weeds, the plants in the in the water. The current's going that way, going that away, and we're going that way. So when you're on a canoe trip, and you come to a, a portage, and you see that it says 2010, that's not a year. That's not the year it was put up. <laughs> We gotta go two kilometers on this one. It looks relatively straight, Mike. It's it's a plus. Oh yeah. <laughs> the first fifty meters are straight. <laughs> All right. Well, we're gonna start off this one. I'm not feeling too bad. The bag's feeling the bag's feeling super light, like twenty five pounds, no problem. Oh, it's a walk in the park, boys. <sighs> we ought to be getting near the end now. I am wiped. Had to stop once for a snack. Uh, drink the rest of the water that was in my water filter in my pocket oh yes look at that that's the end good stuff good stuff big old hill this portage was this portage trail was okay for the most part it was pretty flat then we got to these big big inclines going up and then some really steep declines the declines well not as bad as the inclines were still very taxing having to take very small steps um, and being careful because it was all very slippery. The uh, the grade was quite steep. Look at the colors. Look at the beautiful colors. Uh, I, I, what a tease. When we came down to the wall. I was like, oh, we're done, we're done. Now it was a nice spot too, all those rocks. It was beautiful. I almost stopped there a couple times and I was like, no. Nope. I, uh, yeah, I thought for sure that was the end and I kept thinking like, that wasn't anything. That wasn't bad at all. Yeah, that was at like 1200 or something. Yeah, then the rest of it was horrible. I almost stopped just over here too and then I was like, I saw this opening, I'm like, nope, nope. I had to drop the bag, like it's right back there by that big rock, but. Yeah. Uh, Man, it, that, was, that was tough. It was. Well, so far we're very happy with this creek. It's not uh, it's not difficult at all. We honestly have only paddled a couple hundred meters, but this is not what I was th was expecting, and definitely not anything like Birch Cliff yet. I'll keep you along, let you know if it changes, but uh, smooth sailing for now. Well, knock on wood and cross your fingers and all those other things. But we haven't got out of the canoes once yet on this uh, creek, and we have to be about halfway done it. So we're already on the up. I was expecting to be soaking wet, trudging through this stuff, lifting over beaver dams, slogging through just nonsense and nothing. And I know I keep reference, referencing Birchcliff Creek, but like, so Jake is this old guy, super old dude who works in the Brent store in uh, Cedar Lake. And he's worked there for like 110 years. And he's like, when Kyle and I did our trip, he's like, even though what it says on the map, what I read to you on the map, it, it was still there then. He says, no, don't go Loughran's Creek. It's, it's a, a muddy bottom. Go Birchcliff Creek. It's a sandy bottom. Even though the, the, the map says go Birchcliff. And I was just starting to, like, because he knows. He's not, he wasn't incorrect in some in something i think he did it on purpose i think he either did it on purpose to show us two young bucks that like we need to work our butts off sometimes to be out here or and and like and there's a reward in that because i'm talking about it five years later or he was just trying to punish us because he didn't like us <laughs> kyle's american you know maybe he was taking note on that but anyways, this is uh, this is far superior. It's a fun paddle. It's an easy paddle. And uh, we're dry. We're dry. All right, well, this is our first real notable obstruction. I think if I just 
power through it, I can get through it without getting out. Or just get hung up on the rock two feet in front of it. That works too. I just splashed the bejesus out of myself. There we go. The bejesus. Okay, well this might be a little screwy. I'm gonna have to get wet here for sure. Unless this is the portage, which it might be. Oh, it is. It is the portage. Look at that. Bonus, bonus, bonus. Never got out of my canoe once. Oh, I'm so happy about that. Well, we're here. Okay. Well, we made it. It uh, took us an hour longer than the map said, and we didn't really mess around. No. The last little bit was a little funky. <laughs> well, most of it, the first hour and a half, we paddled straight. Yep. Yeah, we just came to like stuff like this at the end. So we have a 535 meter portage into Lauren Harris, and that's a smaller lake. And we, the, the general consensus is we both need lunch. It's um, <laughs> general consensus of two. The general <laughs> mass of sense. It's 11:50 now, so by the time we get past this portage, it'll be well past 12, and a good time for lunch. But man, that sun is it's brutal. Just now. Ripping, ripping sun. That's not something that doesn't. I am starving. I can tell I need to. I'm getting pretty sluggish. I can tell I need to eat lunch, but the uh, the other side there, it just wasn't inviting. It was all very grassy and ticky looking, and the sun was ripping. <laughs> the sun was baking down on us, so we we decided to do the 5:35 portage and then have lunch on the other side of it, which it's okay either way. But I can tell my, I can tell that I'm slowing down. I'm glad this is only a 500 and uh, next couple are pretty small, but we have a, that 2000 at the end, that 1900 at the end again before we get onto the Nipissing River. So I'm gonna have to gain some more energy by eating it, it, food is fuel at this point right like I can feel it burning out I, I eat it and I can feel my body burning the energy and then I crash and then I eat it again normally that doesn't happen for me until like three or four days into the trip this is really the second full day day three but the second full day of paddling and portaging but because we've done so much already uh, it's kicked in I have uh, depleted my what little reserves I do have. It's a good thing I have a big supper for tonight too. <laughs> You'll have to excuse the wind here, but uh, we're paddling on Lauren Harris, this small lake. And uh, Mike points out this really cool looking campsite, which we're at right now. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's great. I wonder if Lauren Harris, the the namesake of this this lake, one of the painters of Group of Seven, camped here. He's like, yeah, maybe. Paddling closer, I'm like, oh man, I camped here before with Kyle. So this, then we, we got to talking and uh, we worked some stuff out. So we camped at the same campsite we camped at. I camped out with Kyle, and then the next day is the is the day that we camped here, and we didn't get here till 7:30 at night, and we paddled and, and worked hard all day long. It's because we went to, through Birch Cliff last time because Jake told us to. And, and we're here now at 12.50. We couldn't have left any different, even if we left an hour, Kyle and I left an hour earlier or later or two hours, it, it doesn't make up for the time difference, right? So it took us, what, when we leave, eight o'clock? Yeah, five hours. Five hours to get here and then Kyle and I, it took us uh, 10 or 11. So, <laughs> Jake was messing with us. <laughs> Definitely, there's no, there's no getting around that. This is the same exact site we camped at. We're at the same site now. Came from the same exact spot. Oh my goodness, I couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe it when we found that out. But this is a very nice campsite. We had to come here to tell you that and to check it out. So Kyle and I, when we got here, our, it was 7.30 at night, it was dark. The only spot for the tents, right there where Mike is, and then like up here. And if you look, we're on this like peninsula thing, right? So there's winds whipping in from here, and then it whips right through there. There's no tree cover uh, for protection. 
So we got so we got here, it was super windy. We had like a bush buddy fire, cooked up our, our food and went to bed. And our tents were getting blown all around by the wind. It was nuts, man. It was very memorable. I, I, I just didn't know where that happened, but this is where that happened. I have to go watch that video when I get home. Hat. Thank you. <laughs> you like my strap? I love it. Oh, it's nice and tight. Here's the glasses. Oh, good call. Struggle, struggling to get out of the water. I hope you can see it in there. It's stuck. It's stuck. There you go. Good job. It's threatening to rain on us. The clouds are picking up. The wind, the wind is moving them pretty quickly though, that's, so that's good. It's pushing it to the left of the screen. We're headed right dead center uh, where my nose is right now. That's where we're going. And that's the big old portage to end all portages for the day. Well, we did it. We are done portaging for today. But it's raining. No, we're not. <laughs> You have 3.5 left. Oh, snap. <laughs> All right. Now it's pouring. Oh, now it's pouring. So, we've donned our rain gear. We have another couple hours probably paddle, or at least an hour and a half paddle to, uh, to our camp. So, fueling up on some clip bars. <laughs> We made it to our camp. Uh, we've been getting pretty wet. Been here for about an hour. Just threw that tarp up. Trying to get over the rain and cook up uh, on the bush buddy. This isn't the greatest sight. I have stayed here before on my five day solo uh, Ogonko trip when it was raining every single day. I remember coming here and I set up my tarp. That tarp that we're under right now over there and I camped under it and I have my little five by seven where that one is now and cooked up my food and kind of went to bed there. Remember the water was raging like crazy, way more than it is now. And it actually looks like a good spot to trout fish down there. But it's sprinkling again. Um, I got my food rehydrating, it's ready to go. The mic's cooking up now. I might, I might head down there to fish in a little bit. I don't know, who knows, but uh, either way, tonight or tomorrow I'll give it a shot. But right now it's all about getting food into us and trying to get a little bit warm because we're soaked to the bone. This is what it looks like under here. The gear bomb exploded. That's my food right there, waiting to be dug into. And Mike with his fancy, fancy chair. No, no, no sitting on the bag for Mike.
sucks. No joke. The, right there, two times. It was decent size. I don't know if it was a fall fish or a brook trout. I'd like to think brook trout, but man, I might try switching off lures. I'm losing light here, but they're in there. Pretty low brookie. That's cool, he's going back in. Well, I'm in bed now. I had a decent night just sitting around, no fire at all. Uh, I cut that little trout, which I'm happy about, a little baby, baby trout. But um, it's pretty humid, I'm sure, as you can see on the lens. And the rain's starting to pick up again. It's 9 30. No, it's 9. It's just 9 now. Uh, we're headed to bed. I'm going to lay here, just think for a little bit, and doze off. Probably, hopefully, get a, a really good, good night's sleep tonight and up and at them tomorrow. So, have a good night guys. I'm full of moths in here. Full of moths. Lots of moths. Good morning. It's raining. It's raining quite a bit. It's past seven. But I'm not getting out of bed just yet, and I haven't heard Mike stirring about either, so... This might be a late morning. This is our biggest day, it's a 30 kilometer, uh, 30 kilometer day too, so... We do have to get up and go, but... <laughs> it's raining. <laughs> uh, we'll lay here for another half hour, see if it stops. Alright, we got, we got lucky. Seems to be a break in the rain. I don't know how long it's gonna last, so up and at them, get everything packed away while we can, while it's not raining. My tent is absolutely drenched, my tarp is too, so it's gonna be a little bit more water weight on the trip today, but it is what it is. I'm trying to keep everything dry as I'm doing it, so keeping these guys in the tent until I'm done this, put them in the backpack and pack away the tent, all sorts of fun. And I'll have to go reorganize this over under the tarp if it starts raining or after I get this all in. I just don't want to lay all my stuff out on the wet ground either. Leave things out that I know I'll use today, my rain pants. I'll leave my puffy at the top of my backpack so I can get to it easily. camped right on a portage trail here at this campsite but I have no no uh, thought in my head about anybody coming down the, the portage trail there ain't nobody out here well we were able to pack up everything before the rain came back so that's pretty nice just gotta throw everything in my bag now and get a get a move on we'll see you guys on the river
Uh, I've given it the old college try. Got a few casts in here, no bites this morning. That's okay. We'll move along the river. There's gonna be plenty of spots to fish. We gotta get going anyway. 8:30, 30, 30 kilometers to go. Zero down. It's nice, eh? It's perfect. We gonna crash. <laughs> Bumper boats. Take you out. There's a tree in front of us, it's pretty low. I'm gonna have to like lay down here. There's a current pushing us still, too, so I gotta be careful. That was sketchy, Mike. You're not. I don't know, man. What about the other? Is the other side any higher? Just be careful you don't get swept under. Oh man, that sucked. Um, you want you want to go around it? I'm gonna have to get out. Okay, I'll come give you a hand. I'm gonna try and get over on the left here. Okay. Oh, sketchy. Oh, this is so sketchy. I can't step out here, it's so deep. That's the problem. Oh, well, that's good. <laughs> nice and sturdy for you. Grabbing the thwart in front of you help at all or no? The problem is the boat's trying to get up from under. Yeah, you know I hear you. Yeah. Okay, don't let it just go just yet. I gotta get back down. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> Send her through. You got it? Yeah, I got it. Oh, well, lucky you. <laughs> <laughs> and we're good. Nice. There is, I remembered a little while ago about this huge, huge log jam. I've gone over twice now. 
um, and this will be the third time and it's it sh it'll be low it's low water now so maybe it won't be so so sketchy and uh, Mike said he saw a video of somebody portaging around it through the alders so we'll see we'll see how that goes but I know we're gonna pass it So there's the log jam. It's low water. It's not as bad as I remember it being. But I think that taking the portage, the man-made portage, might be the smarter choice up here. It looks to be that way. Let's it's go. What's up? It's not that far. No, it's just right around it. So we'll go see. There's boot prints. So somebody was here at some point. Um, those might be moose tracks. So, there's the log jam back that way. That's what we circumvented through the alders. Like I said, I'd come through here twice. Once with Sean, once on my own, and both times I went over top. But this, this portage was not cut then. So thanks to whoever cut it, because it's a sketchy situation, man. There's a bunch of logs, you get trapped, there's a current pushing it. Even just getting, going in the water for no reason is not pleasant. Yeah, it looks like we may have some weather rolling in. It's a pretty dramatic sky regardless. Let's cut a nice brookie, let him go. We're, uh, we're about near a portage and I don't want to carry him over. We've been eating snacks in the boat. We've been paddling for a long time on this river, but uh, coming up to a 400 meter portage soon. Got to the end of this portage. It's a pretty nice spot for lunch. So we got my lunch meat, cheese, and uh, pita wrap. Can't forget the mustard packets. So it's a, it's a staple, you know. And it's not so cold, so the meat's not. Oh, uh -huh. it's not going green yet. <laughs> pretty low rookie. Get colors on them. All right, good picture. I don't know if it's taking a picture. It is. Look at the pond.
pine. These all big towering white pine above us. Very cool. Sounds like there's some moving water. Oh, there's the portage. That would make sense. We just did this last port, this uh, 300 portage. First cast into those rapids, and about as soon as he, uh, as soon as it hit, he hit. Another really pretty fish. I want to get him back in the water real quick, though. I'm not. We don't need to keep these. They're too small for eating. We have a big bull portage. It's not time for that. Tomorrow we'll have some time to, to spare for that. But I'm happy to, and content to catch these pretty fish all day long. There you go, Mike. Big one. He's a beast. First brook trout ever for Mike. Nice. It's raining. <laughs> Again. Again. So it's, it's hailing now. Thank you. Uh, it's hailing on us. And I don't have my rain pants on. My butt's wet. My butt's wet. wet. It just keeps raining. I'm soaked to the bone. Got about an hour, hour and a half till we get to camp. Now the sun's shining. Now the sun's shining and it's still raining. What is this sorcery? <laughs> I'm glad it's not cold because I'm soaked to the bone. We get back to camp or when we get to camp I really got to uh get things in order, put on some long johns, get a fire going, dry out correctly. we got to get a fire tonight. I know you were saying you're running, maybe it was just going to be a kamikaze bomb there. <laughs> <laughs> well, we made it. We made it to our camp. I'm shivering, but the sun's out, so that's good. Blue skies. Going to set up. This is uh, again. I've camped here with Kyle before too. When Nico showed up, we won't go into that. Check out that video. Nico, are you alive? Are you alive, Nico? You like the way I'm dressed? You like my get up? I'm dry. I'm dry. Mike's dressed funny too. <laughs> oh man. Pied Piper over here. <laughs> Alright, we're uh, everything's pretty good now. We both had supper. It it's downpoured on us like two or three times since we've been here. We had all of our stuff out to dry and it just came down again. So um kind of hiding out under the tarp. We did get quite a decent amount of wood, which is awesome. Check out this sky and I'll go show you my wood pile here in a second, but. Very pretty. Very pretty and daunting. 
I actually I actually really like this campsite a whole lot. It's funny because I've been to all these places and never remember until we're here. That's the old Joe way. So a bunch of super dry spruce there. And then some there. And Mike grabbed those three birch and maple and stuff. So we have some hardwood as well. We're going to sit out under the, tar under the tarp and have a fire tonight. Relax, get warm. in the face with a twig. Good ones. Okay, fire all prepped out. Thank you. Gutentag. Steve Gutentag. Oh, she's going to be a fire, Mike. We're going to have a fire tonight. Look at that. Yeehaw. These are actual decent pieces. Oh, come on. Is it smoky in there? Oh. <laughs> Just didn't need to see it anyways. Evac! Evac! Guy is getting epic, dude. Oh yeah, look, all the, look over there. Oh, okay, I gotta go show the people. One time for the people. One time for the people. Gosh, one time for the people. What an awesome campsite! I really, really like this site. Look at the color coming through in the water, even. 
so pretty. We have smoked this whole campsite out. <laughs> Ooh, glad we put the paddle holding the tarp up. A little wet. Just a little wet. Super happy about the fire. Feeling very good. Feeling very good. Twin brother. Italy. What's that? Italy. Romani and his twin brother, Italy. Italian. Pants. Oh, pants! Pants! <laughs> Good call. <laughs> Toasty! Yeah, police guy. <laughs> nice. I'm all fogged up in here. Look at us. Oh man. Oh yeah. Eh? Fug yeah. fuggerific. That's cool. That'd be fun paddling in. Yeah. I just said the word fuggerific. Fugtastic. <laughs> well, wow, it got cold last night. <clears throat> I was able to dry my pants completely over the fire, or at least 90%, and then I wore them around the fire last night. I have them on now, and I'm very glad that we hung our, our stuff up there because it actually did a, did, a, did a lot. I did not want to put on soaking wet pants today, and that's what would have happened. Also, we didn't leave our, our clothes out hanging up to dry because before we went to bed, we could see the dew in the air from our, um, our headlamps, so it would have wet it completely. But it looks like it'll be a nice day. We have, we have a good two hour paddle before we even come to a portage, so I think I'm gonna leave my long johns on and everything. Man, last night, oh, that was crazy. After we went to bed at like, I don't, how, how long after? Like an hour or something? You call it midnight. Call around midnight. All we heard is like, Arr, Arr. we're like, what the heck? And the big splashing. And then it was a moose for sure, right around here in the water, right, right there. And then it sounded like he was having trouble. So we thought he was trying to climb up here or whatever. And all I'm thinking like, oh man, I don't want to get trampled by a moose. Like, look, you, you come up, you come up the, the, uh, the incline. Them, our tents are right there and a moose in the rut is not going to care if there's a tent there even if he sees it he might not even have seen it it was pitch black so a moose to the old noggin would not have been moose hoof to the noggin would not have been a good night but uh let me go check out see if we can see any moose prints down there too it was close Your canoeber's here.
pretty, pretty in here. Sun's come out. There's still clouds, but the sun's come out. It's warmed up. We're making some good progress today. I have not been able to catch one fish today. We've been at a couple sets of rapids. I've been trying, and I cannot catch a trout to save my life. Nor can I catch a fall fish, which is not normally a problem. I'm, I'm wondering if maybe because the cloud is so cloudy today, maybe now it'll turn on. It's almost one. Nothing. Got my EGB lure on. It's a bit big, but in all honesty, I had small guys hitting this the past couple days, and I don't want to catch a small fish. So I don't. There's no reason to switch to anything smaller. We put in some work today. We've moved, man. We have moved from like east to, uh, from west to east on the map, big time. All right, well, there must be no fish in Algonquin. Well, it's 1.35. Today we've paddled 20.5 kilometers. This is as big as our first real day here was already, and we've done this in five hours. Part of it's because there's been barely any portaging, and part of it's because we're going with stream, with the current down the river. No beaver dams to lift over, no log jams, no real holdups at all. We fished a couple times, but no luck, so there's no no need to stay in that spot, keep fishing. So we're making good time, very good time today. Which is pretty cool. The sun's out right now. It's been all over the map. This the whole trip, the weather's been all over the map, but nothing lasts too long, which is pretty cool. It's sunny for a little bit, rainy for a little bit, cloudy for a little bit. Um, Saturday is supposed to be tomorrow. It's supposed to be a thunderstorm. So we'll see what happens with that, but. Right now we're just moving on to our next portage. I gotta find a stop, a spot to stop and pee. Maybe have another little bite to eat because we are burning some calories here, man. Arms are going constantly. This is the most we've been in the boat the whole trip, and it's day five, day five today. Day five. Day five. We keep coming across these old logs jammed in the river. From like but roughly a hundred years ago oh, I'm gonna smoke it oh boom up on top of it anyway there's a bunch all in the river oh look it's bobbing she's a bobbin now so they got hung up and these were the ones that they didn't care about apparently and they're been preserved in the water not rotted but preserved I can see the big old 900 meter portage ahead and after we complete this, we're going to be off the uh, Nipissing River for the whole trip. So that was like over two days, about two days, on the Nip River. <sighs> Didn't eat any fish. Caught a few. But after this, I feel like my chances have slimmed down quite a bit, because on the lakes, who knows. But anyway, no big deal. Happy I brought my fishing rod anyways, and I'm happy I caught those few, and I'm happy Mike was able to hook into and land his first brook trout. He hooked into a couple, but he landed one, which is great, and that was his first one, so it was a new experience for him. 
and uh, yeah, I've eaten enough fish, I guess, for this summer. <laughs> maybe, maybe next trip. Maybe next trip we'll get a fish, bass or a pike, maybe. Here's the big rapids, and here's the portage. See you over there. It's raining on and off. It's quarter to three now. Or this is what we're portaging around. Some big, big water emptying in. Suddenly I don't feel so claustrophobic. Beautiful colors over there. Oh, how I've missed the rain. I have not missed the rain. Careful in here, it's all rock. We got here at 6.30, it is now 6.59. We went and got a bunch of wood. We have hardwood for days here. Got the bush, bush buddy going already, cooking up, uh, boiling up water to cook up food. The tent set up, blowing up the sleeping bag, or pad. We, we've come into our own uh, routine here. We think, think we get it by day, what, day five. Day five we got, I can't even talk, I can't even talk. My brain is mush. 40 kilometers of paddling and some portaging and 10 hours of travel today. Anyways, after day five, we have this down to a routine. We're lucky we were able to grab some hardwood. We sit, sit by the fire tonight and dry ourselves out and relax because we didn't relax all day long. Well, cheers to today, buddy. Cheers, man. Oh, was a big one. It was a big one. This is uh, what, 42? 43 and a half. 43 and a half kilometers traveled today in 10 hours, or 10 hours of total time. Yeah. Seven something moving. Seven something moving. Mike's got a in reach and it tracked us the whole way. <clears throat> So we, the reason we ended up going 43 kilometers today is because we met up with some people, what, earlier? Yeah, this morning somewhere, they're coming in on the Nipissing. Right. First people we've seen since Monday. The whole trip, yeah. The whole trip. Yeah, and they said it was going to rain all day tomorrow. Uh, thunderstorms in the afternoon. So we wanted to get further than we were originally thinking. That way, if that comes true, we're not stuck here in thunderstorms and raining all day just to leave early the next morning which we've been dealing with rain the whole trip too right yeah it's nothing new so so yeah we put our pay we put our uh, our work in today and got here this is as far as we could get within the allotted time for today any any longer it would have been dark the allotted yeah being daylight <laughs> the allotted time daylight we got here at 6 30 it's dark shortly after seven yeah so yeah, we busted our butts. This is probably, if not the highest travel day I've ever done. It's the second highest and only by a couple kilometers. Um, so tomorrow, where from where we are now, we worked it out. It's a six hour paddle to get out as opposed to being, pro it probably would have been a nine. Nine or ten. Nine or sure. ten hour paddle. Um, 
uh, and then we would camp. Sorry, we were a seven or eight hour paddle, and then we would camp two, about two hours away from the car, and then on Sunday go out to the car. But there's no real point if all day is going to be thunderstorm. We, we're just over it, right? And we're not cutting our trip short at all. We've done the whole hundred miles. Yep. We actually just did it in a quicker time. <laughs> yeah. So a hundred miles in five. Well, uh, five nights. Five nights, six, six full days. days. Six days. Yeah. Accomplished. Feel accomplished. Yeah, man. We brought, we ended up bringing, we brought fish crisp, lard, and a frying, frying pan, pan, and we haven't used them. We didn't really have time, did we? No. It was like... What was the earliest we ever got to a site? Five? Maybe. Yeah. And I think that, that at that time, there was no good fishing, or it was raining, it was or raining. whatever. In all honesty, I don't even have the energy to cook up a fish at the, at the night, at night. And today we thought it was going to be one of our lower travel days, which we ended up doubling. That. Yeah. But this was a challenging one, man. It rained every single day. Tuesday it rained in the morning before we got up, but every other day it rained. It's yeah. not super cold, but like last night it was down to like five. Last night was definitely the coldest. Which is what, like mid thirties Fahrenheit. Most nights have been like low forties, I guess. But it's not been super warm. No. I don't think it's ever hit 20 degrees Celsius or anything. I've definitely maxed out every piece of gear that I ever uh, yeah, uh, closed. Yeah, at some point I wore everything I got. Yeah, for sure. Last night I was wearing everything I had. But yeah, man, it's a, it's a good trip. It's a very rewarding trip. This is a completely different kind of trip than I did with Kyle in, in Woodland Caribou. This is more of a bust your butt to the ground moving trip. And this is the kind of trip that I used to do all the time and that I really like. And in all honesty, I, I love both of the, the the type of trips where where you don't have an agenda and you can just be out for the amount of time that you're out for. You don't have to move around and fish. If there is things to do, like fish and find cool campsites and stuff. And on the other hand, I love to put some miles under my under my feet. At the beginning of this trip, I couldn't do the five, what is it, five or 700 port, meter port yeah. without putting yeah. my bag down. Yeah, and then at the end we are bombing like 2,000. No problem. Yeah. This would actually be a really cool trip to do, like, over, do it in twice as much time. Do it again, but do it, like, ten days. Mm -hmm. And slow down, then you could fish a bit more, see some more of the lakes. We, definitely. When you look on the map, we covered the north end of the park, like, the northwest end of the park completely. We went so far that the map cut off, and we had to start using a different map. Like, it's a big chunk we did. And I've done most of this chunk already, uh, split up between me and Kyle or myself or me and Sean, uh, a lot on the Nipissing for that one, but um, Mike and I did a bunch of different stuff that Kyle and I didn't do, and we did it <laughs> way quicker time. Yeah. But we are in pack boats, not a tandem, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. That, that was, was the plan from the start. That was, yeah, yeah, bust, bust our butts. Yeah, yeah it's a good trip, It's it's. I feel very accomplished and it's not over yet there's still gonna be a bunch of stuff to do tomorrow you know I mean? tomorrow's no joke of a day yeah yeah it may not we may not get up till five or six right. the rain and whatever who knows right we have minimal portaging tomorrow which is great our packs are a little bit lighter but my i swear that tarp when i brought that tarp in it probably weighed a pound but now it probably weighs three pounds yeah. it's so heavy with that water on it but that's all right so things that i would do different next time for this exact trip I probably would forget about fishing altogether. Yeah. I caught a handful of fish. Mike was able to catch that his first brookie, which is great, but it really wasn't a highlight of the trip for me, and we didn't really spend too much time doing it either. We, fishing, didn't, we didn't have any time. We, we didn't have any time, and the fishing really wasn't that hot. Yeah, we were fighting the fighting the sun every day. Three months ago, <laughs> it doesn't get dark till 9, 30, 10. Right. Now it's like 7. Yeah, seven on the dot. And it's, it doesn't get light out. You can't start until seven or seven thirty. That's right. It's dark in the morning. Definitely dark till seven. Yeah. Yeah. But saw lots of cool things. There we saw two moose. I hope it come through in the GoPro. I'm not sure, but we saw two moose. We heard yeah. two. A mother and a calf, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we heard the weird mating situation <laughs> last night. <laughs> <laughs> And then the, the rejection and the stomping off. So we were off just it. hoping we weren't part of it. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. It's a bald, bald eagle right off the hop, right? Yeah. Kingfishers. Kingfishers like crazy. A couple uh, nice hawks. Lots of frog poop. Nothing else too crazy. No, nothing too crazy. No bears yet. I, I, I don't, I've only seen one bear in Algonquin however many times I've ever been here. 
you just you jinxed us tonight though saying this was an easy <laughs> yeah yeah we might be seeing a little bear tonight yeah because this site has there was an old railway that runs just behind us that uh, was built in 1915 and ran until 96 so the map says but yeah it's only like 50 yards behind us there's a old rail bed that runs for whatever a long distance but I can imagine bears wheeling up and down there. Yeah, the animals, Everything. animals are the, taking the path of yeah. least resistance for sure. <clears throat> That's all right. It's the last night. Barely got any food left for anyway, so. Yeah. <laughs> I think. I have two dinners because, we're, well, if we don't stay tomorrow night, I have two dinners. I left. have one. Yeah. yeah. I think that I'm going to do a cold breakfast tomorrow morning. It's supposed to be raining when we get up. So I'll probably do just bars and just hustle. I got some bill tongue. We've been calling it foot tongue because it tastes like feet. <laughs> but we're gonna it's like a jerky type thing. I'll crack that tomorrow and uh, yeah, we'll just do that some bars in the morning and hustle, hustle, hustle. I don't expect to get much footage tomorrow as as the same as today. Like as you can see as you can tell from hearing it, it was just a bust your butt kind of day. You guys saw the highlights, everything that was important you saw. Other than that was just mundane Mike and I not talking and paddling for three hours at a stretch, but <laughs> it builds it builds confidence being out here in the rain and doing all that stuff and it builds experience and stuff. It's so where it's like the next time you come out, like you're not so very concerned when it starts to rain. You just know yeah. what you need to do. You know you need to have your rain gear ready. You know you need to have a fire at night to dry out your stuff. Pack on the clothes underneath the rain gear, even if it gets wet. Like, I've never been on a trip with this much rain, but you could see, even on this trip, if it was, like, 10 degrees Celsius colder, like, closer to zero, Big deal. and one of us had fallen in accidentally at some point in time, like, say, last night after we were frozen and we were wearing what we had left, we oh, no. fell in trying to get water, yeah. it'd be uh, it'd be a tough situation pretty quick. Yep, no doubt. But I guess that's the, uh, the downside to going late in the fall. You get the colors and everything, but... Well, that's good too. We're not neither of us are solo, so you could be a little bit helped out that way. Like, I, if that happened, I'd be stripping down and jumping in my sleeping bag and hoping you're building a big ass fire out yeah. there for me. Yeah. Get those fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, bud. <Yeah. laughs> oh man, good times. I'm glad. I'm glad everything worked out the way it did. All in all, yeah. honestly, I really no, did. like it, it has been good, really good. The yeah. only thing I would do differently is I didn't bring enough food during the day. Mm. I was just constantly hungry. Like 43 kilometers, how many calories do you think we burnt today? I honestly have no clue. 4,000 maybe? Not a clue. I don't know. We, there's no way to eat, we ate that much to replace it. But Yeah, no, I know. I, I ate, man, when I eat breakfast out here, eight, like an hour later, I'm saying I'm hungry, right? Like yeah. at, like a, at the most, like we get in the boat, start paddling, I'm starting to eat again. But I don't have... Just, it, food turns to fuel. Yeah, very quickly. Yeah, I've definitely, I'm a proponent of that. I said that many times. F food is fuel completely. It's just in and burned out. When you get to a portage, you know you need to eat beforehand. And if you don't, you're really sluggish. Yeah. <laughs> Lessons learned. Yeah, this is a good trip. I wouldn't mind doing this trip again in a year or whatever. And doing four nights? <laughs> doing four nights. <laughs> Yeah. Or, or six. <laughs> you, could, you could maybe do it in four if you started the first day in the morning. Oh, it'd be so rough. It'd be so rough. <laughs> anyway, we're just going to sit here and relax and uh, enjoy the night. We have a bunch of hardwood. The fire's good. It's not too cold. We got the tarp up, so tomorrow, uh, if it's raining in the morning, when we get up, we can, um, we can still deal with everything and put everything away. But tomorrow's the last day. 90% uh, sure tomorrow's the last day, bar, uh, un, un, barring any unforeseen circumstances. So I think in the morning I'm just going to throw all my stuff in the bottom of my backpack and get going. Deal with it when we get home. That's right. Soaking wet, danky, <laughs> danky, danky back. Half our stuff is already like that anyway. <laughs> it's very true. <laughs> Alright guys, we'll get with you in the morning. Seven a.m. We're up and at them. It's raining already, so it was a rush job in the morning, eating breakfast uh, bars in the in the boat. Breakfast bars in the boat. Beer bongs and Bentleys. Breakfast bars in the boat. Ah, it's warm. At least it's warm. This is like an all-day rain type thing, just pelting us. It's like a very very light rain right now. Last night. It freaking came down. 
like hard drops. I'm so happy with my tent. That big Agnes tent is so old, like so old, like seven years old, very old. It was used when I got it and it still holds up completely waterproof. Stay dry as a fart in there. Paddling out here, trying to get out in the rain. But the last day is very reminiscent of my five day solo trip here in Algonquin a couple springs ago. Actually, in fact, this whole trip has been very reminiscent of a couple different Algonquin trips I've had. I feel I'm actually very content. I'm getting a little chilled underneath. I should have put long johns on underneath my pants and then the rain pants on, but it was very warm this morning. I was already overheating just getting into the boat uh, with all the rain gear on. But now that I'm permeating through, it's getting a little chilly, but that's all you gotta do is just keep paddling, keep paddling, keep paddling to stay warm. And then soon, hopefully soon, probably in another hour, we'll have our first portage. We've been paddling for an hour already, just motoring through these lakes. Uh, we'll come to our first portage and then that will give us some warmth because we can put the canoe on our back and our, on our head and the backpack on our back and hike through the woods and generate some body heat that way. Have a little bit of a snack at the end and then continue on. So I probably will put my gloves on and my toque as well at the first portage um, just to try to stay a little bit warmer. And that's what I was doing when, on that five, that five day I keep referencing. I highly suggest you checking it out if you haven't. I rain the whole time. I just stayed, I lived in this rain gear. I, uh, I had a tarp and every night I'd have to have a fire under my tarp and sleep under the same tarp, have a fire, dry my stuff out. It was a test of attrition, if that's the right words. But anyways, it's nice to have someone with me this time because uh, that, was, that was crazy by myself doing all this. <laughs> very daunting knowing that you're going to wake up in the next morning it's just going to be this forever no no rest or relaxing just hard 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 work and again i'm not complaining i keep referencing it it's something that's very um fresh in my mind right now and it's a it's a, it's a memory that i hold dear because i did it and i accomplished it the thing is once you're out here a few days there ain't no just getting out you know, you can't, if you turn around and go back the same way you came, it's the same amount of time. Continue on your port, to, on your on your travels, uh, on your route. You're gonna get out when you're supposed to get out. So there's no magic button. There's no save me airplane. You just gotta do it. So that's why it's super important to be prepared when you come into the backcountry. I know a lot of people think of Algonquin as maybe a um, beginner's tripping place, but you know what, it's a huge park. We're right smack dab in the middle of it. And uh, this is just as real wilderness as anything is. The, the elements out here can get you just as they can in Boiling Caribou or BC or Alaska for all I know. Um, hypothermia, trees falling, getting in the water type thing, things like that. So being prepared, having a little bit of know-how, a little bit of skills, which is all I have. A little bit of know-how, a little bit of skills, I try to be prepared. So they come out and test yourself, man. To do this stuff. Have fun. Even if it's not fun at the time. This is if if, if you'd ask me, Joe, would you prefer a rainy day or a nice day to paddle out? I would say a nice day, obviously. But this is type B fun. The type of fun where you look back at it and say, damn, I did that. I'm super happy that I did. We're getting there. Oh man. Pack is so heavy. All the weight, the water weight in it. Good news is my food bag is almost empty. So that weight is gone. And the big portage is 
are done. We did it so silly. We had to do it to do our loop, but all the big, hard, difficult, long portages were the first couple days. We were barely in the boat. We paddled, we portaged more than we paddled the first couple days. And our packs were the heaviest then. It's just the way it was, the way we had to do it. The current, the flow of the Nipissing goes that way. We couldn't do it in reverse. So, anyway, that's the trip. That's what we planned. And I'm glad. I'm glad it all worked out the way it did. Almost at the lake. We're making great time. It's not even 11 o'clock and we're almost at our last portage for the whole trip and that's the 600 and something and then we're on back onto kiosk. From here it's probably another hour and a half or so um, paddle. Paddle and portage till we get to back to takeout. We did 22 kilometers today in like less than five, less than five hours. It's pretty good. Skies are being generous right now. It's not pouring on us. We're just moving, trying to stay warm. Almost out. Finish lines in sight. Wendy's. <laughs> is in our grasp. There she is. Oh, the wind. Canoe catches it like a sail. Oh, man. to kiosk proper and there is the takeout you can see canoes and cars driving around and all sorts of civilizational we did it mike we did it yes lots of portaging and paddling feeling very accomplished well i think i'm gonna end the video here guys thank you very much for coming along <sighs> wendy's weights I'll see you on the next one. Bye.